Hi, my name is Mike Gabe and welcome to my KSP campaign. Hang on. Didn't I conclude last episode leaving a probe just about to get to Duna's sphere of influence and promise that I'll be getting right back to it? Well, yeah, I did, but uh, that's still just a couple of days away, and in the meantime, while well, this thing was ready for launching, so I'll be getting, I'll be doing this first, and then getting out to Duna, where we will be spending the bulk of this episode. But why don't I briefly talk about this mission? This is a supply barge. It's actually a vehicle you have seen before, and it's on its way to Kerbin Station. It's got some supplies, a ton of resources, and we're going to be using it up, using it to stock up the Korion One, which is docked there. It'll still have plenty of resources still to spare, to be used by both of my two turbine system runabouts. And then the Korion 1, once it's stocked up and crewed up, will be sending it off on its mission that I'll talk about well, a little bit later in the episode once we get to it. But like I said, most of this episode is going to be devoted to the Duna 1 probe. This was a probe launched many, many episodes ago, very early in this series. It has limited tech. And the plan is going to be to do some mapping. I have a mapping contract to map both Duna and to map its orbiting moon Ike. Uh, and the plan is going to be to get capture, swing around Duna, and then get a capture around Ike. Hopefully a polar orbit where that would be appropriate to do some mapping. And then once it's finished mapping Ike, shuffle it back over to Duna so it can do that. And like I said, we will be getting to that very shortly in the meantime, this thing is making its way over to Kerbin Station. A lot of people right now on Kerbin Station waiting for these supplies and resources. But it turned out they're going to have to wait just a little bit longer because once I had this thing docked, I had to hop out to the Arm B. This is an asteroid recovery mission. A contract actually that I've already completed, which was just to put an A-class asteroid in orbit around Kerbin, that is done. But what I have here is a 60 meter per second burn to get me a moon encounter. And this is something I'm just doing for fun. I want to hook it up to uh, Yoi Station, which already has an asteroid. It's built around an asteroid, and I'm going to put more asteroids together. And, oh, the burn didn't quite come out exactly as I liked it. I want a rendezvous with the station that you see there. So I want my periapsis to be right on the orbit of the station. So we'll use a node to just sort of fine tune this just a little bit. And this burn turned out to be under one meter per second. So I'm just using RCS little puffs. Oh, there, that ought to do it. All right, that'll work. And we'll be there in just under five days. All right, no more delaying. Let's get ourselves out to Duna. Where we've already entered into Duna's sphere of influence and the remote tech flight computer has received the instructions to do some science and we're just waiting for that to be executed. We have to wait thanks to the one minute light delay out here. This is an old probe only science I got is a thermometer and a barometer, and that's going to be it. Oh, here we go. Okay, that's the thermometer. We got 18 science to transmit, so let's send that off. I'm keeping an eye on my electricity. I want to drain the back. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, no worries there. So here comes the barometer. Here we are, 27 science. Yeah, we'll transmit that. Don't have any electricity issues. All right, and that's going to be it. <laughs> Not a lot of sciencing to do. We will be getting in close to Duna, and we'll be getting some near science there as well, but that's not going to be for another couple of days. So let's get ourselves back to Kerbin Station, where we are towards the tail end of all the resource transferring we have to do. We want to make sure we get off everything that we can off of this supply barge including a handful of supplies that uh, had to be shuffled about. Then once all that was accomplished, it was time to undock and deorbit this thing. See, I'm just doing this using uh, RCS. 
I've taken off all of the liquid fuel that was on this thing, so all I got left is monoprop, which I have tons of. I always have tons of monoprop on my station. This thing does have parachutes, but I'm not going to bother riding it down. I'm just going to get its periapsis down low enough, and then I'll let stage recovery take care of it. And speaking of some of those supplies, got Bartner here. He's installing a new storage locker. Speaking of Bartner, this is his 182nd consecutive day in space. Way above any of my other Kerbals. He spent most of this time just chilling on Kerbin Station here, waiting his turn to get a trip to exit Kerbin's SOI so he can go up to level 3. I've just never really gotten around to it. But anyways... Karayan 1 is now all ready to go. Whoa! Shoot, there was a bit of a wobble happening there. I should have waited for that to settle out. Ah, get... Don't crash in to... Ah! <laughs> okay, let's put on the reaction wheels. And just back away slowly. Oh, all right, all right, we're clear. Okay, let's talk a bit about the mission. Way out here, we've got Minmus Driller 2. Uh, this goes back a little bit. I kind of botched the injection of Minmus Driller 2, and I left it in this eccentric and inclined orbit with the idea of one time in the future sending out some Kerbals. Well, that time is now, so their mission is going to be to rendezvous with this, transfer a little bit of fuel over to it, so that it can get itself down to Minmus. And for our brave crew, we got our pilot Valentina, who I'm gonna completely blame for that uh, undocking from the station. Our engineer Gene Lee and our scientist McNan. And I think when this is all done, I might try and see if I can shuffle them over to Minmus Station. I haven't been there for quite some time. But anyway, in order to pull off this rendezvous, I want to do as much of my burning, especially the or particularly the prograde retrograde portions of my burns, close to Kerbin where I can take advantage of the O-Birth effect. So my first job is going to be to push up the apoapsis of my current orbit so that it is as high as the periapsis of my target orbit. Here is the location where I'm going to be aiming to have my rendezvous. I'm not worrying about inclination right now. It would be too expensive to make that change here. I want to make that change way far away from Kerbin. Okay, now to create the phasing orbit. So what I want to do is create an orbit so that when I return back down here towards Periapsis, I will be rendezvousing with Minmus Driller 2. So I just sort of pushed up my Apoapsis, well, kind of an arbitrary degree. I'll keep it underneath the Moon's orbit. Unfortunately, the driller is way out there towards its apoapsis, which means it's not going to be back here for quite some time. So what I have to do is I have to start pushing that maneuver ahead, keeping an eye on those close encounter indicators until I get them down there towards periapsis. And that took a while. Yeah, we're not going to get this rendezvous for almost 12 days. It's okay. They got lots of life support. So looking at this right now, I realize I should have pushed that apoapsis up higher. If I push the apoapsis up higher, it'll still be 12 days until I get the rendezvous, but what that means is they'll be further away from Kerbin when they need to make the inclination change, and that will make it cheaper. Uh, I think I was in a hurry to get back to Duna, but that's okay because this isn't going to be happening this episode, so I still have time to change it. But right now... I think I put this off long enough. Let's get out to Duna and stay there for a little while. 312 days in space. And we are now less than three minutes from the moment of truth. A 21 second capture burn, which should also get me my Ike intercept. We're also in near space now, so I've got a barometer and a temperature scan reading coming up. Just a little bit. We are on the monoprop that is on the, what should have been the ejection stage, a stage that was never intended to leave Kerbin's sphere of influence, but I did hang on to it, and I'm glad I did. It's proving itself mighty useful. There we go. Temperature scan, 25.2 science. Oh, oh, 
Where'd the barometer go? Oh, I think, oh, it's down there, okay. <laughs> I ended up saving the barometer data, so I gotta review the data so I can transmit it. That, of course, is going to take a little bit of time as well. Just time warp to that. There we go, we're about 10 seconds away. Yes, this little ejection stage has just been awesome. And to think, it was never intended to come here. But I think its usefulness is beginning to come to an end after this uh, after this burn. Anyway, here comes the barometer. 37.8 science away. Transmit back. All right, we are now... Got time warp a little bit. Let's just get ourselves to the burn. Burn, of course, is being handled by the remote tech flight computer to deal with our approximately one minute signal delay. I guess you could write a KOS script for this, but the flight computer gives a nice simple interface. Here we go. This is such a simple burn. I've been doing, I've done uh, a mission to Moho previous to this one. It's so expensive. This one is so easy. Just about there. Oh, that must be our capture. Little camera jiggle. We'll put this on the normal vector. Solar panels do need all the help they can get. The sun is weaker out here. Oh, got a milestone here. That's for getting our orbit around Duna. I already got previous milestones for uh, entering Duna's sphere of influence and transmitting science I didn't show you. What I'm really interested in is taking a look at what our Ike encounter is like. I was having some trouble getting to Ike, so I have to flip through all this. Bunk, 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 bunk. Here we go. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's see here. 25 kilometer closest approach. Yep, that will get me some near space before I put this thing into its final mapping orbit. But now comes the time to finally get rid of this ejection stage and start to work with the probe proper. This ejection stage, by the way, does have its own communitron and probe body and is picking up a relay signal from the main probe. So I still do have control over it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a maneuver to get this thing to crash into Ike. And in that way, we'll get rid of it, even though it's done such a great job. Alrighty, so there, that's that done. Let's take a look at our ScanSat map. I have opened up the altimeter scanner that this thing has. It's the uh, low res one, again, old tech. I'm gonna get a strip along Duna's equator before I get to Ike. Why don't we check on our contracts? Hang on, I also have a contract to build a comm network around Duna. I must pick this up after sending this probe on its way. And it's already ticking down. You know what? I wonder if two satellites might be enough. I mean, I still do have control over that ejection stage. I was going to send out another mission, but I don't know. Why, why don't we just go for it here? Maybe I can use the Ike encounter to my advantage. So we'll set up another maneuver, get it not to crash into Ike. There's still quite a bit of Delta V left in this little stage. Yes, this is working. I'm not picky about the resulting orbit. I mean, this won't be pretty no matter what I do. But what I ended up with is this 10 meter per second correction that gets me this somewhat eccentric, and very inclined orbit around Duna for that ejection stage. Yeah, let's go for it. Oh, hang on, electricity. <laughs> oh no, yeah, this, this thing has a couple of batteries on it, but no solar. It was never intended to be long term. Oh, this sort of feels like an exploit, but I kinda wanna do it. <laughs> oh, we'll just see what happens. In the meantime, let's take a closer look at our mapping contract. Oh crap, this Ike orbit needs, it needs to be very specific. It needs to have an inclination between 74.0 and 74.4 degrees. 
So I set up another correction burn, this time for the main probe. Uh, I'm guessing that's about 74 degrees. <laughs> I really can't tell from here, I'm just eyeballing it. We'll see when we get there, because when we get there, Kerbal Engineer will tell me exactly what our inclination is. And we'll be getting to those correction burns and the Ike encounter very shortly, but I have one last visit to the KSC to make. You know, one of the issues that I've been having recently with this campaign is the length of time between when I design a mission and when that vehicle finally launches. And sometimes I really just don't know what to expect to roll out of the vehicle assembly building and sometimes, well, frankly, what's on the pad scares me. This is a Munar Harvester, which will, hopefully, after a few false starts in the past, finally get some decent resource harvesting happening. As you can see, it's big, and I have a contract to return 2,150 units of ore from the moon's surface to Kerbin's orbit. I'll be getting to the details of this mission next episode, but I think this launch is a good time to make an announcement. I'm going to be moving this series into its final episodes, with this launch representing the last launch of a major new vehicle. From here on in, I'm going to be just concentrating on finishing off missions that are already on the go, which really should carry this for several more episodes. I've got a lot of stuff still happening in just the Kerbin system, not to mention six interplanetary missions in progress, two of which are crewed. So there is still a lot to come. I really have no idea why I didn't put Separatrons on those things. I started this series over two years ago, and I've had a lot of fun with it over these hundred plus episodes, but the game is becoming increasingly sluggish. The playback you're watching now is sped up, with lag pauses cut out. This stops the video from being insufferable, but it does take a lot of time. Also, many of the mods are getting old, with support understandably spotty. That said, I'll be continuing with my almost vanilla campaign, and I have an idea for a future campaign as well. As for this mission, suffice to say I got this thing into low lunar orbit, and we'll be getting back to it next episode. Now, back to Duna. Actually strike that. Ike! We are in near space around Ike. I thought I would cut out the correction burns and all that kind of thing and cut right to the chase here. We are under a minute and a half from our capture burn around Ike and there we go. There is barometer science. We will transmit that and yeah I don't have any more temperature science. I obviously also collected science up in high sp space for a total of 108 science that was sent back the KSC and now we just got our burn. Remember that the inclination of the resulting orbit has to be a specific amount and according to Kerbal Engineer my inclination coming in here is 72.7 degrees so close to the required 74 degrees so what I did is I just tweaked my capture burn so I'm gonna try and get my capture and fix my inclination at the same time. Again though, this was done largely by eyeball, so we'll see how it goes. It's a 16 second burn, we're just a couple of seconds away now. There we go. This is also going to be bringing down, or setting my apple apps, I guess I should say, to 400 kilometers, which is again a requirement of the contract. Oh, the inclination requirement just went green. All right, and we just got to finish off this burn. Oh no, it just, ah, it's not green anymore. I lost it. What's Kerbal Engineer say? 74.9, it's half a degree too much. Oh, what a pain. Well, the apoapsis is right. Okay, so the apoapsis is good, we're at 400 kilometers, and I do have to bring my periapsis now up to 400 kilometers, so I'll try again to tweak my inclination half a degree back. We'll see how that goes. Meanwhile, 
I thought I would ride the discarded stage come wannabe communication satellite out of Ike's sphere of influence and check on its orbit. And oh, I should check electricity. Oh shoot, we're dead. We have no electricity. The batteries are drained. No electricity, no communication. That's no relay. <laughs> this is just debris now. You know what? Maybe this is just as well. I mean, it's in this nice orbit. <laughs> But uh, it serves absolutely no purpose, and it might be just as well, because that was sort of an exploit. Uh, maybe it's this is all for the best. Well, we still got more to do with the main probe. As it approaches what's hopefully its actual final orbital insertion burn. Apoapsis is right. Just need to get the periapsis and the inclination right. Oh my god. Goodness, Duna looks beautiful and dusty back there. And the burn has started. I'm just watching those orbital parameters, wanting them to go green. And we're coming to the end. Oh, periapsis went green. Inclination is not green. Kerbal Engineer says 74.5 degrees. Ah, I'm a tenth of a degree off. Oh man, why does this inclination parameter have to be so tight? You have to be in the ballpark with the other two. Oh my gosh. Okay, well it just took a tiny little burn at the equatorial ascending node. And there we go, that feels good. Let's check over here with the contract. We'll scroll up here a little bit. Yep, all orbital parameters are green. Now we just have to wait for it to map. Oh, it's just going to map 25% of the surface. And it's already got 20. Well, this isn't going to take too long. Let's go check out our ScanSat map. Oh man, this, this orbit is stupid. Why does it make me put it in this orbit? It'll never get the poles. Well, stupid or not, I have to leave it in this orbit to satisfy the contract. And I'll let it map. I'll let it get way over 25%. Let it get as much as it can. There's still over 20, 1,200 meters per second of delta V left in this probe. So shuffling it over and getting it to orbit and map Duna shouldn't be any issues at all. But clearly that's going to have to be for some future episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time. Bunk, 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 bunk. Bunk, 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 bunk.